Hey, good morning, everybody. So last night I was trying to figure out what I was going to talk about. And I'm just like, because there's so, I mean, I can go over it again and again and again about J juice and all the different diseases. And there's some big ones out there that we should be aware of because they're going to come to surface more than not in the future. And I mean, I don't want to be an alarmist, but we got to be aware that if we're going to participate in sports or do exercise regimes, let's say you're on the J juice and you're, and you want to do things that are like sports and, and that type of stuff and the Olympics and all that, um, that at least, you know, you're dodging bullets, but if you're not doing J juice and you are in extreme sports and you're doing things that, uh, could potentially traumatize parts of your body, especially around your central nervous system, that what you could possibly be inducing or triggering. And I, you know, it, I'm not saying that everybody that does sports and everybody that does all these stupid things out there, like doing jackass type of stuff is going to trigger something, but you don't know, especially when I'm reading the statistics that 95% who trigger ALS, which is about like what, two in a hundred thousand don't, you know, are not inheriting the gene. So only 5% inherit the gene. Some of you already have issues that you know about. I mean, like if you have polio, if you have certain kind of neurodegenerative types of diseases, those are predispositions. Those are indicators. Okay. Not saying that you're going to trigger it, but as you get older, the chances become increasingly uh, or become increasingly, I would say, uh, Potential, yeah, it, it'll, it could happen potentially. I'm not saying, I mean, it's going to, but the chances become increasingly greater, okay? So um, so you got to understand what, what ALS is. And I had to even look up, I had, I had to figure out how to even pronounce it. Amyotrophic sclerosis, okay? And it is, it has been triggered by the different viruses, okay? And I read through this huge, huge industry tax, I mean, PubMed, that um, that since the vaccination of polio, there have been offshoots of the polio disease, but in different um, manifestations that have neurodegenerative qualities. And it's because you know when you when you vaccinate against polio and you and you lessen you know the amounts of polio cases, but then you have offshoots of the same thing. And because the disease mutates, it just does, okay? Um, we still have weak bodies out there. We still, I mean, here's the thing. If there is polio or if there's any kind of neurodegenerative, neurodegenerative diseases in your family, the kids, especially, especially if they're doing sports and they're doing things that are going to be aggressive to their body, you don't know when that's going to trigger. I mean, those are indicators. This is, there's 5% that inherit this type of thing. And then there are specific uh, diseases and, and viruses in that family that could potentially trigger something like ALS. Not trying to scare you yet again, but you gotta be aware, especially your kids. Some of you do have kids that could potentially be carrying this gene because it says 16,000 people are living with ALS or have the gene of ALS, but it hasn't triggered yet because there hasn't been that localized trauma yet. But if they are very active and they're doing a lot of different sports and all of that, it's hard to say. It's hard to say, but if you are aware of your predisposition, so to speak, it might prompt your kids or somebody in your family to do the JJs to help, to help strengthen the body and then wash away those proteins and those things that could potentially trigger it because you know i mean with the way things nowadays are you know it's there's aggressive viruses that are out there and people have weak bodies and they inherited weaknesses from their parents you don't know what's in your kid's future but you kind of do but you kind of don't and you got to be able to learn how to talk to your kids about this so they understand what they're in for 
that's what I'm saying. You look at your parents, you can see exactly what the child is going to be experiencing most likely. So when I was looking at predisposition to ALS, I was looking at Lou Gehrig, and Lou Gehrig is like a, a baseball player. And I'm telling you, when those guys are batting or taking pitches that are 90 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour, that's so much trauma to the body. That's extreme. And then, so here's the thing, traumatic injury and exposure to enteroviruses and viruses in the family, targeting the CNS or central nervous system, sports, okay? Taking trauma to the body in whatever concussions, in sports, in um, abuse, you know, if you're getting beat up by your husband or your wife, or you get mugged, or you get raped, or any of those things, all types of trauma could potentially induce that if that is if if you uh, if the injury is hit in your body the right way, and then you're already exposed to enteroviruses that nobody can get away from because they're they're in respiratory as well as through fecal and through mouth and through fecal matter, and it gets into your micro get into your or my, microbiome, okay. And so I was reading about you know what what are the predispositions. So I have a lot of information, but it's a lot to read, so I try to condense it to what I think you'd want to hear. That is, that would be, you know, so it's easier to digest and try to read through all of their stuff through um, PubMed. And so, um, so I, I kind of took these excerpts. So military service. So military service, you know, they're they're getting vaccines like everybody else does. No big deal. It happens, okay. But they're also exposed to um, high stress trauma because they're doing like you know hand-to-hand -hand combat practices yeah they're going into the gas chambers to experience tear gas yeah they're jumping out of planes yeah they are doing a lot of exercise okay um, maybe exposed to a lot more elements um conglomeration of elements to you know because that's just kind of the nature of the military you're you're put in situations that not everybody in the, in the, in the civilian world is put, put into so um so military service studies indicate that people who have served in the military are at a higher risk of ALS. It's unclear what about military service might trigger the development. It might include exposure to certain metals, okay, so those are, you know, trace minerals or chemicals, just a conglomeration of elements, traumatic injury, viral infections, and intense exertion. So when you're exposed and you're getting virus infections and you're doing intense exertion, like working out, like doing major physical exercise, okay? And you may get an injury, um, who knows, okay? And you already have that in your family, the predisposition is greater. You gotta know this. You gotta know, because I'm telling you, the, the, the crazy mainstream society likes to propagate exercise, sports, and all of these high impact type of stuff people doing jackass type of stuff, jumping off of, of roofs, going into pools and hitting, you know, the, the, the diving board on the way down type of thing. And they're all laughing like, oh my God, that's so funny when it really isn't. So hold on a second. Somebody said a comment or maybe I don't know. Oh, Christina. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, so, you're always going to be exposed to viruses. I don't care if you want to blame it on the vaccine, blame it on whatever the hell you want. It doesn't even matter. At this point, it doesn't even matter where you got the virus from because you live in a world full of people, okay? When you have enteroviruses, Coxsackie viruses, polio viruses, all these different viruses, okay, that are in your community, even if you're not vaccinated, you are still getting it in the air. You can blame it on the vaccine. I don't really care who you blame it on, but it doesn't even matter. You can't live in a freaking bubble. You'll be around animals. If you want milk for your kid and you want to live on a farm, you're going to be around animals. You're going to be in the dirt. You're going to be around biodiversity. Biodiversity has viruses. You'll never, ever get away from it. So at this point, you're going to have to stop blaming people. At this point, some of you are right now are so huge in the blame game that you're losing focus on what you need to be concentrating on, which is figuring out how to beat the environment so you're not then subject to the conditions of your environment, okay? And so uh, the viruses and um, weaknesses in the central nervous system that 
then associate with uh, motor neurons, okay? You put those two together, and then 5% of you already have that in your genetics. So 16,000 people every day are living with ALS. So it hasn't triggered. It triggers, I guess, when, when you're like between 50 and 75, and then you don't really have long to live once you trigger it. In, because it, it does increasingly become more susceptible as you get older. But those that get it when they're young, they have a better chance of living with it longer, like the guy Peter Freights, who... Uh, was the one that created the whole ice bucket challenge and the whole donation thing. He passed away recently. And he also was in extreme sports, playing sports and doing extreme aerobics or what, I don't say aerobics, but he was doing the sports. I mean, he's taking these, these, you know, hitting these pitches or going 90 miles an hour. When you think about how much that completely reverberates in your bones and in your muscles, that creates injury. Okay. So, um, so heredity, 5 to 10% of people with ALS inherited familial ALS, and most people with familial ALS, their children have 50 to 50 chance of developing the disease. That's that's a pretty high chance, okay? Then, yeah, then there are genetics. Some studies examining the entire human genome found many similarities in the genetic variations of people with familial ALS and some people with non-inherited ALS, okay, so these genetic variations might make people more susceptible to ALS. So then I, I, I just took a few notes and I'm going to read them just because you guys got to hear it as well as read it. But two in like 100,000 incidents, 16 are living with ALS at any one time. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is devastating neurodegenerative disease that primarily attacks motor neurons in the brain and spinal cord, leading to progressive paralysis and ultimately death. So there's a lot of different other diseases that actually affect the brain, neurogenetic um, generative and it, they're all related okay they're all related now will you hold the right kind of genetics that will trigger ALS is the key and so that's why I'm pointing out lifestyle genetics as well as belief systems and then you're not gonna live in a bubble so some of you that think that you know that, that everyone needs to stop doing vaccines or everyone needs to like you know wash their hands all the time you are not immune. You cannot live in a freaking bubble. So as soon as you figure out you can't live in a bubble, maybe you can move on and figure out how to help your family and your kids and yourself, okay? So um, so currently there is no effective therapy. So now you just so you know, therapies compound the issue. So there is no effective therapies, which means that once you trigger it, you either, here's the thing, you either do the J-juice and you deal with the pain or you let it, recycle you back into earth and it's painful on its way on your way out because your body is systematically degrading it's going to try to heal but they say that you know you don't feel too much pain in the beginning but i mean i don't know what peter freights had to deal with on his way out the door they don't go into details of what his actual what he was feeling during his time but they you know the way the industry is they're going to give you as much drugs as they can to completely anesthetize you so you don't feel pain because they don't want you to suffer Okay, so um, the majority of ALS cases are sporadic with no known family history. Unfortunately, the etiology, etiology remains largely unknown. Con contribution of enteroviruses, a family of positive stranded RNA viruses, ribonucleic acid viruses, they basically replicate the uh, DNA, which has been mutated, okay, um, including polio viruses. So a family of positive stranded RNA viruses, including polio virus, Coxsackie virus, e echo virus, enterovirus A71, and enterovirus D68, it to do the development hold on, of ALS has been suspected as they can target motor neurons and patients with prior poliomyelitis shows a high risk of motor neuron disease. Okay, so some of you have polio in your family and you've had kids and they are part of this system doing all these different exercises. They're probably not doing the J juice. This is something you must get across to them, okay? 
in this review, we summarize the nature of enteroviral infection, including root, root of infection, cells targeted, and viral persistence within the central nervous system. Okay, so some of these viruses, actually these viruses, a lot of these viruses target specific parts of your body. So these enterovirus, poliovirus, all these different viruses that you hear about when it comes to neurodegenerative neuro diseases, it targets your central nervous system. There are some viruses that target the breast tissue. There are some viruses that target the reproductive system. Okay, so all these viruses, even though they're not bad on very strong bodies, weak bodies that sustain trauma or inherited traumatic genes, traumatized genes, will then trigger all of these crazy diseases that you hear about, okay? And again, it's not the vaccine's fault. It's the fact that you have a weak ass body is your fault because people who get some of these vaccines don't trigger anything at all, okay? And they've been exposed to the same viruses, the same adjuvants in these vaccines, but yet they're not triggering some of these issues that some of you are trying to blame the vaccines for. So again, understand it's about what you bring to the table. Your predisposition is what triggers all these diseases. You're going to be exposed to these viruses and the elements no matter what. And now it's up to you to figure out how can you strengthen your body to handle your environment. And that's exactly what the whole thing with the J-Juice is all about. And that's why I don't allow anyone to knock vaccines or anything out there because it's not that it's not biotech's fault. It's the fact that we keep procreate on weak bodies, creating more predisposition in our future children. All right. So um, we review the molecular mechanisms underlying viral infection and highlighting the similarity between viral pathogenesis and the molecular and pathological features of ALS. And finally, discuss the potential role of enteroviral infection and frontotemporal dementia, FTD, a disease that shares common clinical genetic and pathological features with ALS and the, significantly, uh, and the significance of the antiviral therapy as an option for the treatment of ALS. Antivirals, when you're taking antivirals, that's a poison that is going to try to interrupt the body's way of recycling you back into the universe. And there's obviously consequences to any antiviral therapies. So the key words, so you guys understand the key words around this, is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, enterovirus, TDP-43 pathology, nucleocytoplasmic trafficking, RNA metabolism, autophagy, autophagy deficits, neuroinflammation. So several environmental risk factors have been studied, including viral exposure, physical activity, smoking, heavy metals, pesticides, and chemicals, military service, and electric shock therapy. However, a definitive relationship between these factors and ALS have yet to be established, but they studied those for a reason. Okay, so they didn't point out obesity. They didn't point out um, other issues that people deal with as far as triggering disease, but they studied these specific things for a reason because they know that all of those are components, but everybody has exposure and experience these components, but yet have not triggered ALS. So the more you understand your predisposition and risk factor, and you understand what it all entails, then now you can do something about it, or you can play the avoidance game and then not get into extreme sports or anything crazy. Or you could do all of your different, you know, pills, power supplements and things that's going to do something, but it's not or you do the J-Juice, because that's probably the safest thing you can do to head off any potential of that, especially if it's in your family medical history, any of those other viruses like the polio virus or anything else like MS or any other neurodegenerative disease like autism. They haven't mentioned autism, but that's still a neurodegenerative disease, okay? So enteroviruses, are a group of single positive strand RNA viruses of the Pico Picornavirida family that includes poliovirus, 
Coxsackie virus, and you can look up all these, echovirus and enterovirus, with the latter, okay, emerging as a causative agent of these recent large epidemics across the Asia Pacific and North American region, respectively, hold on, um, respectively, okay. Although EVs commonly cause asymptomatic infection, which means you don't have any symptoms, sometimes they are associated with severe diseases, including neurological complications. EVs have, which is enteroviruses, have a high tropicism for the, for the central nervous system and account for various neurological disorders, such as poliomyelitis, aseptic meningitis, encephalitis, and non-polio flaccid paralysis particular in infants and children, okay? Since the successful campaign of the polio virus vaccination, neurological diseases caused by non-polio EVs have been increasingly reported. So even though we eradicated polio, it has been mutated into something else because people are still weak. But every single time you're exposed to a virus, it's going to change, and then it's gonna then make it necessary to get another vaccination to give people a layer of protection. So if they're that weak, they don't trigger the actual acute form of that disease. And that's the whole point of vaccinations, you guys. Okay? So um, since the successful campaigns of the polio virus vaccination, okay, so for example, okay, acute flaccid paralysis was frequently observed among patients with EV-A71, echovirus, and Coxsackie virus infection, in addition, epidemiological studies from the recent outbreaks reveal a strong relationship between EV D68 infection and increased incidence of acute flaccid myelitis. Okay, uh, para uh, paralytic polio cases and 1879 deaths from polio were reported each year. Polio incidents declined sharply following the introduction of vaccines to less than 1,000 cases in 1962 and remain below 100 cases after the year of April 2nd, 1999. Okay, so even though they, um, the vaccine eradicated polio, yes, it mutated into other types of paralysis and neurodegenerative diseases because people are still weak. They're still procreated on weak bodies, okay? All right, so eight, while the majority of the EVs are transmitted through the fecal oral route and replicate in the gastrointestinal tract, some EVs can cause respiratory infection and spread via respiratory secretion. Available evidence suggests that EVs can invade the central nervous system from these primary infection sites through main mechanisms. Retrograde axonal transport, both poliovirus and EV H71 can infect the peripheral nerve and gain access into the central nervous system via retrograde axonal transport and transsynaptic spread. So you can Google all that. Uh, blood brain barrier penetration during viremia, poliovirus in the blood can directly cross the blood brain barrier through disruptive tight junctions that are likely induced by inflammation independent of the viral, independently of viral receptors. So inflammation yeah, which is the immune system bringing up the T cells and all that. Um, ninth, and or via transferrin receptor mediated direct transmission, Trojan horse invasions, EV such as poliovirus and Coxsackie virus can also invade the central nervous system through virus infected immune cells, including macrophage monocytes, dendritic cells, lymphocytes and nesting myeloid cells which act as carriers to deliver virus into the central nervous system. EVs likely utilize one or multiple routes of entry into the central nervous system. So if you guys have weaknesses in your respiratory system and all these different routes that it's taking, you're most likely going to trigger it at some point when it depends on your, on your lifestyle, your belief system, and your family genetic history. Okay? And so what is lysis, lytic, lysis? the disintegration of a cell by rupture of the cell wall and membrane. Okay, so although EVs are regarded as highly lytic viruses and EV-related diseases are commonly results from acute infection, EVs such as poliovirus and Coxsackie virus can persist in various tissues, including the central nervous system. 
glial cells and neuro neuronal progenitor cells were reported by the site of the CVB3 persistence. Multiple viral and host factors, including viral receptors, viral mutations, viral evasion of host immune responses and host translation machinery participate in establishing a persistent EV infection. Latent EVs, which are EVs that are, that are just in your system, but they're, they're latent, they're dormant, latent, might be reactivated. So you might have the antibodies for it, okay? So just like when you guys get exposed to a virus, whether it's vaccine or in your environment, and they do a test to see you know, if you're positive or negative and you come out positive, which means you have enough, I guess, as a protection. But when you have too many of those that build up in your system because now you have autophagy uh, deficits, which means you're not releasing any excess, those can, those can be reactivated. That's what I mean by when you have too many antibodies in your body clogging up your, 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 your blood as well as too many fatty deposits they get reactivated. So you can have too many of the HIV. So you can be HIV negative, still be exposed to the HIV, um, the virus. But um, as soon as you are, start stagnating your autophagy system, I guess, that's when AIDS turns, that's when comes the AIDS virus versus HIV positive or negative, okay? So, um, so latent EVs might be reactivated years later, either spontaneous or in response to exogenous stimulation, such as local trauma. So you get hit by a ball or you're do, you fall because you're doing exercises or you, you, know, you, you clash heads because you're playing soccer. That's why it's mostly the sports guys that you see. People are doing high impact sports. A lady last night was responding to my post because she knew someone in hospice that was dealing with ALS and he was in the sports world. And he is suffering, and now he's passed away. I'm 50, okay? But she was just like, man, if only he knew about this as far as the J-Juice way back when, because he would have done this. Because she knew he would have understood this. She understood this. And so, you know, I'm reaching people, but I'm telling you, I have to speak to specific conditions. That's the only way I can reach people is to try to speak to your specific condition. But it's hard because there's so many of them, okay? There's so many conditions out there. So, um... All right, so latent EVs might be reactivated years later, either spontaneously or in response to exogenous stimulation, such as local trauma. EV persistence in cardiomyocytes and pancreatic cells. So cardio, that's like in your blood and your heart, right? And pancreatic cells have been associated with chronic and clinical conditions such as dilated cardiomyopathy and type 1 diabetes, mainly through continuous inflammatory responses, Okay. So inflammation, you'll see later the inflammation, you know, your, your immune system being activated can also trigger this stuff because then it starts the, the chain reaction of events when somebody is very weak, messed up, haven't corrected their weaknesses and their mutations, negative mutations. So viral infection in ALS, viral infections have long been suspected as an environmental risk factor. Okay, we know that. And it's neurotropic viruses, exogenous retrovirus is human immunodeficiency so hiv virus 2 you're supposed to that that also could trigger this human t-cell leukemia virus and human endogenous retrovirus herb so all these different viral infections that you've been exposed to and all of that are a contributory factor herbs are the remnants of ancient retroviruses integrated into the human genome and normally inactivated but can be reactivated under physiological and pathological stresses. Okay, so you guys have viruses that are latent in your body. All of you do. You can't get away from it. It's not biotech's fault. It's been in the human genome ever since the beginning of time, before biotech even existed, okay? Because people still died out there, and they didn't have names for the reason why people died. They just call it age-related diseases back before the first vaccine, okay? So it is also possible that EV infection causes diseases, pathology, seeding, protein, misfolding focally during the acute phase childhood infection, followed by the gradual propagation of misfolded proteins in other regions of the central nervous system, eventually leading to ALS onset in adulthood. Okay, so then you have compromised nucleocytoplasmic trafficking, defects in nucleocytoplasmic shuttling, 
have recently been identified as a central theme of ALS research, contributing significantly to the pathological hallmark of cytoplasmic mislocalization of RBPs. And I have no idea what RBPs are. I'll try to Google it, but I just couldn't get a straight answer from Google. So you guys can Google it if you want, as far as the context of uh, neurocytoplasmic trafficking. Okay. Neuroinflammation, the immune, the immune involvement in the development of the ALS has been widely studied with most focus on the activation of glial or glial cells and astrocytes such as events would lead to the re-upregulation of multiple pro-inflammatory cytokines such as lunar or tumor necrosis factor G monocyte chemo whatever protein basically it's uh, triggering T cells to come to surface triggering antibodies to go and do what it has to do okay to help guard against try to heal and then against infection all that so the presence of immune cells and cytokines within the cns within the central nervous system can worsen the virus mediated neuropathology and the potential bystander damage caused by the subsequent t cell activation furthermore neuroinflammation initiated by microglia and astrocytes can trigger cell death by promoting the production of reactivated reactive oxygen species Altogether, current evidence supports the possibility that chronic EV infection is, is able to induce the later onset of CNS dysfunction by inducing inflammatory reactions. Okay, so your body has a defense system that it gets uh, triggered so many times and you're not fixing the weaknesses. So it keeps getting triggered and re-triggered and re-triggered and re-triggered. This is what causes in the cell degradation because eventually, I mean, those antibodies are going to destroy you. They're called antibodies, anti-life. Okay, antibody, anti-life destroys life because you're not keeping the balance. So defective autophagy, this is where the J juice comes into play because J juice induces autophagy. So those proteins that are accumulating, causing the interruption of all of the mechanisms that doesn't trigger all those different diseases, that will keep everything out and then fix the weaknesses. And then you're gonna have to feel pain. So defective autophagy. In addition to RNA metabolism, ribonucleic metabolism, ALS causing mutations in genes such as SQSTM, P62, da da da, are frequently related to protein quality control. Okay, um, autophagy deficits and consequent accumulation of misfolded proteins and large RNA clusters are implicated in ALS pathogenesis. So when your body is replicating a mutated cell that then creates a, a major multiplication of dysfunctional cells that will then trigger some of these neurodegenerative diseases, okay? So that's why the whole J-juice induces autophagy, releases the excess, keeps what, you, what it needs, releases the excess, and then you gotta feel pain. So if you have, if you are doing the, the J-juice and you have polio in your family, you have ALS in your family, you have all these different paralysis types of genetics in your family, you're gonna feel nerve pain. If you have neuropathy, you're gonna feel nerve pain, okay? And that's something that you're gonna have to deal with because that's in your family genetic history as well as it could be a predisposition just because of your lifestyle. And so, um, so you, you got to understand that no matter what, you guys, we, we're, we're seeing an increasing amount of diseases popping up and they are multiplying and dividing and multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. And then we have new diseases and then we have the same diseases, but now more of the population is getting them. And that's why I can't express enough to just do the J juice, even a little bit, just to get used to it. But I want to remind you guys, it's not the vaccines that are causing all of these issues. It's not. Because you're going to be exposed to it no matter what. And a lot of you are in the military. A lot of you do practice extreme sports. You're all into the whole workout world and all of that. And if you, if you know, you put too much stress on certain parts of your body and you're exposed and you get sick, Okay, you've been exposed to the different viruses, the enteroviruses through respiratory means or through the mouth or through the fecal matter. Um, you just don't know. And there are specific indicators. I mean, what are the indicators of uh, ALS that you may think is just completely benign? Now, I don't want to scare you, 
but you got to know this. So, um, let me, this is how I research. ALS symptoms indicators. Okay, so people may experience in the beginning, loss of muscle, muscle spasms, muscle weaknesses, overactive reflexes, problems with coordination or stiff muscles, whole body fatigue or feeling faint, speech, difficulty speaking or vocal cord spasm. Also common is difficulty raising the foot, difficulty swallowing, drooling, lack of restraint, mild cognitive impairment, severe constipation, severe unintentional weight loss and shortness of breath. And you're like, oh my God, there's like a billion diseases that would replicate this. Yeah, there is because you only deal with 11 different systems with a certain set amount of, of, of mechanisms. So yeah, I mean, and if you then exhibit the specific qualities of a person who may have a higher predisposition, that should concern you even more, okay? So this is just more information to tuck behind you. Do the J-juice. Don't be afraid of the pain because I'm telling you, it's better than triggering something crazy. Because I'm telling you, when you when you are cognitively aware, I mean, you're not be, you may not be completely cognitively like, you know, perfect, even though you may not communicate, but if you are aware and you can't talk, you can't move, you can't really do anything except sit in a wheelchair with everything, you know, on you, and people around you are just wiping your ass, trying to feed you. That is not the quality of life. That's that's being in a prison of your body. Okay. And so, you know, I would rather feel pain and heal than potentially trigger something such as that. I mean, that would be far like I'm not really an well, actually, I don't know. Because, look, I used to play sports. I actually hyperextended my wrist when I had this big girl in San Francisco kick the ball right at me when I was playing goalie. Like, literally, they were doing, um, uh, what do you call it, penalty shots. Okay? So when I'm, and I have these goalie gloves going like this, protecting my face so I don't get my face knocked out, I catch the ball, but it hyperextended my wrist. I quit soccer after that. And then I try to play it again and then re-sprain my ankle a couple years later. And I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm weak. I'm done. I can't do it. Done. But you just don't know what kind of trauma, whatever it is. If you fall down like off a truck bed and you already have that predisposition, okay, you, you know, any kind of injury, no matter what it is, you fall and break a hip. Okay. I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of injury, if it's, if it's localized trauma and you've been exposed to the virus and it's somewhere in your family or not even in your family, it just happens. Everything is just the right conditions. Why would you want to risk that? Okay. It's not about just dying. You know, it's not just about like stroking out. I mean, there's, there's these indicators. And then all of a sudden one day you can't move. I mean, you read people's stories about how they, how they, how Peter Freight's saw that he started, he started feeling all these things and then he started seeing it progressively become worse and worse and worse. And then when you progressively become worse and worse and you go get diagnosed, they tell you, okay, this is what you got. You know, do you want to wait till that point where you're, where you are diagnosed? Cause at, at that point you let it get that bad where you go and get diagnosis, especially if you don't go to the doctors very often. Okay. So, um, all I could be is the messenger. You guys could either receive the message or ignore it. But no matter what, you don't have a choice in how you die in this world if you truly want to wait for the inevitable. So, you know, I think quality of life and quantity of life is paramount. Those two must go together. It, is, it, won't, it doesn't make sense to have a uh, lack of quality of life and live for like, you know, 50 years and your life sucks. Not everybody is going to go out like that where there's nothing. Some people are lucky enough, I guess. Some people would characterize, you know, dying from a heart attack with nothing but just death is lucky versus somebody triggering a progressive disease that just systematically destroys them and paralyzes them. So just more information. 
When you do the JJs, you're going to feel pain. If that's in your family genetic history, you're going to feel nerves. You're going to feel everything. The J-juice wakes up that which has been asleep for years, and then you will find out what's in your family history. You will find out what diseases are lurking in your body because J-juice is not poisonous. It doesn't have any viruses in it. It has the right bacteria to repopulate the gut. It has nutrition. It has the water. It has the minerals. It has the right set of everything, and now you will find out exactly what your family history has, has dubbed upon you and then you also find out and revisit the traumas that you've dealt with in your own lifetime. And I think that's an amazing journey. If anything, that's an amazing journey to find out what kind of traumas and what, what your family went through. Okay. But I mean, I, when I went through this, I, you know, I had a few things, I had some headaches and I had you know, yeast infections and, and I had hemorrhoids and all that stuff we were doing, you know, dealing with during my current life I had skin stuff come to surface. You know, I had some weird ass dreams. Okay not knowing, you know, not really understanding if that's something from the way past or what, but, you know, when you're, when you're getting dreams because your biochemistry is fluctuating, you know, it's like taking the, the, the brightest colors of your life and put them all together in this beautiful collage of just colors and scenery. I mean, um, if you ever seen that book, when I was a kid, there's my favorite book. It's kind of the dark book, but it's called the rainbow goblins. And it was such a colorful iridescent book of just, these goblins that are, you know, and I don't remember the whole premise of it, but it was just the colors that I was attracted to. And so when you're going through biochemical fluctuations, your biochemistry is going through, it's, 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 it's leveling out and regulating, you're going to see the most colorful things in your dreams. And that's one of the most, my, my most favorite part of the healing process is seeing those colorful dreams, you know, during my healing process. So, you know, it's not always going to be bad healing. You're going to have some interesting stuff happen while you're sleeping. And some of you have sleep paralysis and other types of things. Some of you have dealt with night terrors and all of that. And that may come to surface. I don't know. So it's just going to be a journey and it's a personal journey. And you have the option to come into my group, get the book and express what you go through so people can understand, or it gives you a place to kind of like, you know, vent. So you're not carrying this stress in your body and you will just go through the healing process. And it's, and it's perfectly safe. And if you feel at any point where you're uncomfortable and you don't want to deal with this alone, call your doctor. Okay. So, um, because J juice isn't poisonous, but you carry all of these weaknesses in your body that you're going to have to deal with. There's no way around it. You're going to have to deal with it. So just understand it and understand the indicators that are out there because not everybody is lucky enough to die with a heart attack and just not wake up. I mean, I hate to say lucky enough, but that's what people bank on is that they just die. They're like, oh, I don't care. I'm, I'm waiting to die. I don't really care. But they don't know how they're going to go out. They already have family members that have, that have lost their mind, but their body was still here. Okay, so that's already in your family history. Do you really want to trigger that? No, do the J-Juice. Love you guys. Bye.